Hello. For those who don't know me, my name is Guga Rebus. I'm the CEO of the Guga Rebus company, which produces accessories for practical shooting. I'm here today to present the video manual of the new version of our holster, which is even better than before. This video will be quite comprehensive, quite complex, quite complete, and will cover all of our holster's functions, so that you can enjoy it safely. I'm sure that you'll be very happy with it. In this version of the holster, this 2015 version, the main difference from the previous version is that it serves a wider range of pistols. We now cater for, and our product now supports, pistols with asymmetric trigger guards, like the HK, for example. Today we are honored and proud to say that we have the only holster that supports most guns used for practical shooting, including those with asymmetrical trigger guards, using the same product without the need to purchase any additional accessory. Therefore, we have a completely innovative and unique product. So what comes in the box of our holster? We have the holster itself, the manual, a very complete manual, which includes all of the stages of adjusting the holster for all guns. In this version, we have an addendum that includes the new function, which is the inclusion of asymmetrical trigger guards. It also comes with the inserts for asymmetrical trigger guards. The upper adapter that we can use to make the final adjustment to the holster in case the frame is still slightly higher than the trigger guard, the two lower adapters that we can change depending on the trigger guard and its height, the necessary tools to use, adjust and assemble the holster, and a sticker in case the athlete is left-handed. Our holster is completely ambidextrous with a simple alteration that the athletes themselves can do to make it left-handed. The first step is really a new step. This is what we've changed. The main change between this version and the previous one is that it allows us to choose which insert we'll use depending on the trigger guard on your gun's type of trigger guard. If it's a linear trigger guard, or rather symmetrical, the holster comes prepared and you don't need to make any adjustments and can skip this step. If your gun is, for example, an HK, where the trigger guard is completely asymmetrical, with differences in the width between the beginning and the end, then you will need to change the inserts for the ones prepared for that type. If this is the case, how do we do this? We need to take out the upper bolt from one side using the Allen key placing it in the hole where the bolt comes out, push and remove the first one. Sorry. We pick the insert that fits. It's obvious which one. It only fits a certain way, so you won't have any problems. Then we go up here to make it simple and push it. Fit it. It only fits in a certain way. Therefore, you won't have much trouble fitting it. 
Done. It's in. Then we pick it up and put the bolt back in its place and tighten it delicately. You don't need to use the key in this position at all as it's polymer. As these are polymer plastics, if you force it, if you tighten it too much, it might break. So don't do that. Always use the longest part of the Allen key. It's more efficient for the necessary adjustment. To change the other side, we simply remove the grip, unscrewing this bolt in a counterclockwise movement. Pull it until the end, it has a spring, so you have to pull it until the end, then pull it out of the grip. Pull out the grip, now we have access to the other bolt. And we can repeat the procedure. Remove the bolt, push the insert out. Pick up the other one. Do the same procedure. Putting it above so it doesn't fall and so that it goes in more easily. Put it in place, put the bolt back in. And your holster is ready for an asymmetric weapon. For example, we have here an HK. You can see that it is completely fitted without any slack, with no problems, locked without a problem. Continuing with step one, we'll move on to opening the sides so that we can access the internal part of the holster and its parts so that we can really begin adjusting it for your gun. How do we do this? Get the appropriate key, which is the medium-sized key, and remove these two lower bolts. So that we can then begin to widen the gap between the sides with the central bolt. We remove this bolt, the central bolt, using the thickest key, an M4 placing it in the central hole. There's a hole in the middle of the two smaller bolts, and this is where the internal bolt is. Turn it counterclockwise, and the holster will start to open, as you can see. See? It will open until one part comes away from the other. You will get to a point where it becomes loose enough to remove it with your hand like this, and thus we begin the adjustment for the gun itself. This is step two. We're going to choose which of the three sliding lower adapter inserts we're going to use for the adjustment. This adjustment is basically the definition of the height of the inner surface of the trigger guard up to the lower part of the frame. How do we measure this? How do we see this? Get the holster and look at the side that has a lock, a passive lock with a lock lever and where the gun will sit where we'll support the gun to see if we need to touch this adapter. 
If you support the gun in the adapter, if the gun is supported here below and on the other side, if looking from the other side there is any type of space here or if it fits correctly here, it's completely supported in the base of the holster, then that's what I need to do. In this case we don't need to adjust anything. If it has a shorter trigger guard, it will support this part of the gun. It will be supported in the upper part of the holster and will be away from the base of the holster. So we need to change the adapter, but in this case it's not necessary to do so. There is something important to mention. I'm using a standard STI an uh, STI-45 to adjust the holster at the moment. Over here, I also have an STI that has an SVI frame, an open one. It has a trigger guard that's a little shorter, adapted for my hand and such. And we're going to see if there's a difference after the adjustment has been made. Very good. In this case, therefore, we don't need to touch the insert in the lower adapter that comes in the holster, which is always the slimmest. Stage 3. In stage 3, we're going to adjust the whole internal part of the side where the passive lock and the lock lever are. Here inside, as you can see, there is a box that holds the lock itself. In addition, we need to adjust the width, which I'll show you later on. And there is also the adjustment of these two bolts, which are adapted to the format of the front of the trigger guard. How do we do this? The first thing to do is to get the gun, place the lower part of the trigger guard in the holster here, and slide the gun to the front until it stops, touching. The upper part of the holster will touch the frame of the gun. Lightly, you don't need to force it. Rest it and turn it to see if the lock is in the correct place. As we can see here, the lock is completely outside of the trigger guard. It should be inside, but it's outside. So what do we have to do? We have to take this box up to the top of the holster so that the lock sits inside. How do we do this? Put the gun down, pick up the thickest key, the biggest Allen key. Inside here, at the bottom of the holster, there's a bolt. Put the key in the bolt. As we turn counterclockwise, the box begins to rise. We are going to raise this box upwards. We have to try the gun again to see if it's in the correct position, in an adequate position. So this we need to try in order to really test it, okay? Bring it up pick up the gun again, and slide the gun up. It still needs to come up a little more for two reasons. The bolts are still distant from the trigger guard. There's a space here, can you see? There's a big space here. I'll show you. And and the lock is not yet inside, in the middle of the trigger guard. So what are we going to do? We're going to raise it a little bit further. Go back to the key.
and test it again. Okay, now the lock, as we can see, is already inside the trigger guard. Can you see? Look here. It's already inside the trigger guard. But for the lock to work, the gun needs to push this lower part of the lock downwards. Or rather, this part of the trigger guard needs to push this part of the lock so that it goes inside the internal part of the trigger guard. Why isn't that happening? Because we need to raise these bolts again. The lock has already come up, it's apparently in the adequate position, and now we're going to raise these two bolts so that the trigger guard touches the lock earlier. How do we do that? With the key. Inside, there's a bolt. Unscrew both of them. As the trigger guard is completely asymmetrical, square, practically square at a straight angle, we need to bring it up there. When it's almost there, we begin pushing the lock. It's not perfect yet, but we're getting there. A little bit more. Again, it's already there. Push with the gun in the appropriate position. The lock is already inside the trigger guard, and here we're getting close to the ideal alignment. The next step is to adjust the holster. The lock, I'll show you that. Like this, uh, so that this here, essa, the lock, ó, a, a has to be wider. Ela, it has to press or squeeze the trigger guard uh, on the lower inner side, dele, here, inferior, interna, aqui, que não so isso that this aqui, doesn't ó. happen. Can you see? Tá vendo? Como é que a gente faz isso? How do we do this? With your hand, push the two white bolts downwards so that the two adjusting bolts appear, two external and one internal. In the same way, we open the holster. First, remove the external ones, always with more or less the same number of turns. And in the middle, there's another bolt that we need to unscrew in a counterclockwise movement. A metallic part will start to appear in the middle. This is a piston that will undo the lock and will increase the width of the lock. Or rather, it will reduce the space that the gun has to sit in and will move it closer to the pistol's trigger guard here. Here, there's still a bit to go. Can you see? We need to take it a little further. Take it. You don't need to force it. Set it down. Tighten it a little. Just let the bolts touch. It doesn't need to be more than this and test it again. There's still a little slack. Can you see? Go again. It's important to remind you that these details are important. Don't try and make big adjustments all in one go. Do it little by little so that you can feel how the gun sits.
it will end up aligned. It's already moving around less. It's almost in position. In reality, if there's still some slack here, it's the white bolts that have space for the trigger guard. If the trigger guard moves between the white bolts, entre o parafuso branco e essa parte da and this part of the lock here. Portanto, esse Therefore, espaço aqui this space está here is practically correct. correct. If we place the lock here, aqui, ó, it's practically correct. correct. It doesn't need to be tighter than that. But we um need to adjust the white branco. bolt a little. É How do we do this to be sure? If we activate the lock with the lever, the handle won't come back. It doesn't enter anymore. So place the gun in here and then see if it moves upwards and downwards. It's still slack here, so we can raise the bolts a little more. A quarter turn lightly, no more than this. It's already improved a lot. It seems we can only go a little further. So what happens? We need to spend a little more time on this adjustment. The holster's main adjustment here. If you're going to adjust it, put the gun in again, go a bit further, go back a bit until the gun fits like this. There will always be a little slack, always. But you need to experiment until it's too tight and then go back a little. It's ready. We don't need to adjust it anymore. The gun neither goes up nor backwards, okay? Here the alignment of the holster is perfect. Step four is the other side of the holster. And we're going to adjust the other box. The other side of the holster is where the active lock is. It's always inside the trigger guard and is driven by a spring which can be adjusted by the bolt. You increase or decrease its tension so that it becomes looser or tighter. Essa regulagem desse, desse lado é uma regulagem This side is basically adjusted in the same way as we did on the other side. Na, na lateral anterior, na outra lateral. Então, so how do we do this? Put one outra, next to the other here. Aqui. The e first thing to do is to elevate the box on this side so that it's lateral, the same height as the other one. It's not millimetric. It doesn't need to be millimetric. It's done visually. So how do we do this? The same way as the other side. There's a bolt in the lower part of the holster. Put in the key and rotate it counterclockwise. It will come up until practically the same point as the other one. It's a visual adjustment, okay? There's no need to be millimetric. Take a look. Compare. That's it. It's at the correct height. In the next step, we need to make the width of this lock here the same as this lock. The adjustment mechanism of this lock is the same as the other. The difference is that for us to find the bolts to do the adjustment, we need to squeeze the lock so that the bolts appear in the slot on the side of the holster. They're exactly the same. Two external bolts and one internal one. They work in exactly the same way. 
How do we do it? Put the key inside here, loosen the top one, the bottom one, and the central bolt as well, counterclockwise, to push the aluminium piston. Now, we need to compare visually again. There's still some way to go, quite a way. So, we look again. Loosen the external bolts a little more. And push. Then loosen the internal one too to get closer. I think now we might have gone a little too far. Can you see? I think now we need to go back a little. How do we do this? Loosen the external bolts a little and tighten. If we tighten the other way, for one half turn, for example, we then tighten the middle bolt. We pull the piston, then tighten the external bolts so that the lock returns and touches the aluminium piston. There it is. Now it's quite similar. Now we go to step five. We're almost finishing the adjustment of the holster, which is closing it with the two sides and the adjustment of the width of the trigger guard. We're going to adjust the holster to the width of the trigger guard. And this is what I'm going to show you now. How do we do this? On the side of the holster that we've just adjusted, put the bolt back inside. Never close the holster without this bolt. If this bolt comes out during the disassembly, remember to put it back in place. If you close the holster without this bolt, it will be very difficult to open it again, okay? So remember to put it back. Take it up to the end to close it completely. We'll reopen it afterwards. Take the other side, fit one into the other, it's easy to do, fit it together. The way I do it is to turn the holster over. Hold it with both hands like this and done. Closed. The holster is completely closed. What do we do now? Get the gun and test to see if it goes into the holster. I'm going to try and show you. It won't go in because it's too tightly closed. What do we do now? We reopen the holster with the key in the central bolt turning counterclockwise. Open up the holster a little. Leave the key in so we can test it. It's still a little too tight. I'm not going to put it in because it's still very tight. I'm going to open it a bit more. We took the key out. We can see that we do the adjustment in the same way as the others. You have to test it. Pay attention. It's a little too slack here. The gun still moves around. If we look at the back, it still moves around a little. See? The gun moves around like this for two reasons. The first is because the holster is wider here than the trigger guard. How can you see this? Instead of inserting the gun in the holster, support the gun in the upper part of the holster and see if there's slack here. There's still some slack. We can close it a bit. It's a minute adjustment. We're talking about less than half a millimeter here, maybe. 
Você aperta de novo. Tighten it again. A história e... Ótimo. Agora Great. Não dá apertar muito mais do Now que we isso. can't tighten it much more than e this, and there's still a little slack here. Essa folga, we are going to remove this slack in a second way. Maneira. When you put the uh, gun in here, there's this slack. Remember I said at the start of the adjustment that the upper part of the holster needed to lightly touch the frame at the top. No frame, so, lá, it's moving around because it's então, not touching é, both sides symmetrically. How can we make it um touch a bit more aí. there? Uh, a a simple way to do this is to pull down the lock so that the gun won't come out again. Huh? E so, put in the key and move Nota, down the box of this lock here. Dessa trava aqui. Essa trava vai descer um pouquinho. The lock will go down a little, which will bring the gun inside the holster. E, mas é bem pouquinho. But only a little. So let me put the key in e here, and we can bring um it down vai, just a little. Do horário, a gente desce, turn né? counterclockwise, and it Nem goes volta, down. Não. Half Uma a turn, volta, maybe. Nossa. One turn e at the most. Let's test it. The folga. slack has gone. E aí, a arma tá so the holster ah, is practically adjusted. O corpo tá praticamente regulado, faltando um pequeno There's detalhe, just one more minor é detail, tá, which is the tá next step. The lock is working, ah, and at this stage here, aqui, the internal aqui, part of the holster is completely tá regulado, adjusted. A gente vai devolver Put back the two external bolts lateral. into the side. Here. Aqui. Ops, acertei a chave. I fitted the key. Aqui, primeiro encoste o parafuso. First, fit the perto. bolt in. Encoste os dois. Don't igualmente. tighten it yet. Para que não tenha nenhum Tighten both of them equally so that there's no Encostou. twisting of the holster. Place the key in this position, position, never in this other position. In this position, we make the final tightening and retest the gun. There's no more slack on the side, and that concludes this step. Step 6. Step 6 is, in fact, the final stage in the adjustment of the holster, and it's the adjustment that will eventually eliminate this movement here that the pistol still has in the holster. This doesn't affect safety because the pistol doesn't come out at all. But how can we eliminate this movement here by adjusting this adapter? Well, raise this adapter so that it comes up to remove the slack that's still present. We are going to loosen the bolts. There are three bolts, just like in the rest of the holster, in all of the adjustments made to the holster. Loosen this bolt a little in the middle and the two side ones that are in these two little holes. Loosen them all equally. I think I went a bit too far, but we're going to experiment. The slack's already completely gone. If I wanted to, I could even go a little further. I don't see any need to, but if you want, you can go a little more, loosening the middle a little more and going a little further. Here we need to take care not to force the gun too much in this way. When you have just adjusted it, see if the lock is going in freely. If it's entering freely, there's no problem. See that the gun comes out smoothly.
It goes in and comes out. There's no movement on either side. Your holster is well adjusted. Step 7. Step 7 isn't exactly an adjustment step, adjusting the holster. This step is an adjustment on the tension of drawing the gun, the effort that an athlete makes to remove the gun from the holster. Using this button, this bolt, we adjust the tension of this lock here. So, as we rotate this bolt clockwise, or rather upwards, this lock becomes harder, harder, harder. Essa trava fica mais dura e mais dura e mais dura e mais dura. Então, so the higher it goes up to the limit, up to the end, the tighter the lock will be, and the more tension the athlete will find to remove the gun from the holster. O atleta vai encontrar para tirar a arma do coldre. Uh, até o barulho muda. Even the sound changes. Assim ela tá com a like this, máxima. it's with Se maximum tension. Dela, if I release the tension, para mínima, por exemplo, to the minimum, for example, It completely changes the draw. It depends on each athlete. The safety of the holster isn't altered. There are simply athletes who like the gun to feel heavier on taking it out of the holster and others who prefer it lighter. It depends on individual preference, on each athlete's style. This is another innovative function of our product. As I said in the beginning, I would present the two guns, a standard STI-45 and an open SV. The holster is completely adjusted for the 45 standard. It works, it's all okay. Let's look now if it works for the open SV. There it is. Absolutely perfect. There's nothing more to do. Locked. It doesn't fall. Perfect. To finish, we need to adjust the positioning of the holster in relation to the body of the athlete. First, we have these two bolts that tighten a joint and make it work. This one is a little tighter. We need to loosen these two bolts here. You don't need to loosen them too much. We can move the holster in all directions. Therefore, the athletes have total freedom to put the gun wherever it suits them, for their manner, their style, for the best draw for them. After the athletes have found the position, whatever it may be, they simply retighten the two bolts. Here we can tighten a little more strongly. It doesn't need to be much. There, the holster doesn't move around anymore. This is one adjustment. The other, which is also unique, is a function of our product, our holster, that no other in the world has. 
que é That is the adjustment of the height in relation to the athlete's waist. Unscrewing this bolt and pulling it out, we can find five height positions in relation to the athlete's waist. So how do we do this? Pulling it out, you adjust it. As you move up the grip, the gun moves down in relation to the athlete's waist. If we put the gun here, we can see that the grip is practically at the same height as the end of the gun. It's important to remember that regulations require that the gun sits above the belt, above the waist. The highest part of the gun must sit above the athlete's belt. So in some cases, some athletes may not be able to use this last adjustment depending on the gun and on the trigger guard. However, you have a wide array of adjustments here. In addition, there is also another function that allows you to, if you want, tighten it again so that it doesn't move anymore, or, if you want, keep pulling it to the end. Lift it up and the grip comes out of the holster so you can store your holster. The belt is even easier to store. There are many advantages. Also, if you have a case the case we call the soft gun case, when you are in the safety areas or under the judge's order, you can put your gun in the holster. Take the gun case, R1, and put it on. This is incredibly simple to do. Once you put it on, with the gun in the holster, on the belt, obviously, close it, and you'll have your gun on your waist in this way. If you want, I repeat, in a safety area or under judge's rule, you can take it off. Take your gun off your belt, store it, and walk around the stand without having to carry your gun on your waist the whole time unnecessarily. This is a function, yet another function, that only our product has. So I hope that you like the product. I hope that the manual has been useful for you. If it has been useful, Please like the video, send us comments, either through YouTube or our website or on our Facebook page. It's very important to us to hear from you, to hear your opinions, suggestions, criticisms, compliments, etc. We can only improve if we hear from you and hear what you think. Thank you very much again. Until next time.